The new perspective gives us a sad look at Diana and that Harry could be a victim of this. I have always had a lot of respect for the princess, and I am not trying to repeat way too much about what happened. But recently, the information that's out there is being used to prove that Harry and Meghan have taken advantage of Diana's image to make themselves appear more beautiful. And today, a loyal fan is claiming that Princess Diana was not the saint that her admirers made her out to be. So I'm going to share this point of view with you, and perhaps this information is true, or maybe it's false. We are going to discuss it together in the comments section. So she explains that Diana came from a very old aristocratic background. Her lineage is the same as Charles's, actually, just a different branch. Her family was incredibly dysfunctional. And actually, Charles first dated her older sister. Diana loved attention. She wasn't very educated, so she became a childminder. And while Diana was working as a childminder, Charles was under so much pressure to marry and have kids. All his choices were carefully considered by the entire family. Now, this match was made by the Queen Mother, and I suspect one of the Spencer women as well. Charles was about 30 years old, and Diana was only 18 years old. They got married, and Diana did want to be queen. Charles required heirs. And I really do believe that Charles tried his best to make things work with Diana. But the marriage was loveless, and it was arranged, and marriages like that do require some compatibility. I'm not saying they can never work, but this one was doomed from the beginning. Diana still had a lot of growing up to do, and Charles was very entrenched in royal protocol, the hunting and shooting and fishing bunch. As they matured, Diana developed into quite an attractive woman. She wanted all the attention, she wanted the bright lights focused on her, and Charles ended up becoming withdrawn and quite surly. When she would try to flirt with Charles and get his attention, he would only withdraw more. And then William was born. Now, by this time, the distance between the couple was obvious. And then Harry was born. And she had an affair with her bodyguard, and he got sent away. And then Charles met Camilla again, and things progressed from there. Diana had a few affairs. The longest was James Hewitt. It was five years. And Charles, of course, had Camilla. So the queen was the one who said, enough is enough, it's time for you two to divorce. William was 10 years old and Harry was only seven. And Diana headed to the US. She truly was the queen of the people. Charles stayed in the UK trying to pick up all the pieces. And if we fast forward to today, well, we can see that Charles finally got to marry the love of his life, Camilla, and they're incredibly happy together. William also waited a long time before he got married and he's also incredibly happy with Catherine. Well, obviously, Harry did not learn from his parents' mistakes. He met Meghan, and they got married so quickly, and then he headed to the U.S. Harry claims that his wife is the embodiment of his late mother. He said in court that he wondered who his father was when he was a boy, that he thought that his father was some guy named Hewitt, and unfortunately, he does resemble him. Now, all this is reported facts. These are not just rumors. Diana was no angel. She was a product of her environment like we all are, and she only wanted to be loved and desired. I can't blame her for that. What woman isn't that way? Charles is hardly a monster, though. He's also a product of his environment, and he just wanted to do his duty as best as he could. William has accepted his environment, and he has matured into the wonderful man we see today. Well, Harry decided to rebel against his environment, and now he has grown into the, oh, I can't even call him a man, whatever he is that we see today. Now, of course, that is a gross simplification of the story. There was a whole lot more to it than that. Diana had at least 10 affairs that we know about. The first one she started in 1983, it was with the Earl of Pembrokeshire, Henry Herbert. And I had heard this was why Diana fell out of favor with the royal family, because affairs, if discreet, were overlooked as long as the heir and the spare had already been born. Now, Diana's first affair happened before Harry was born. It has also been reported that in an interview, Diana was asked about why she was so passionate about charity work. And supposedly, she just laughed and said, I do it because I've nothing else to do. The fact that she said something like that does lead us to believe that she probably was not the saint that people like to think she is. Diana could often act like a bit of a spoiled brat, and so Diana's fame was something the palace PR team created to distract people from that, just like they did for Harry, actually. But Diana viewed that as an opportunity to undermine her husband. There is so much information out there about her behavior, and it's not pretty. So maybe that really is where Harry gets some of it from. 
Diana to this day is a style icon, but the truth is a lot of her style came from the palace dressers. If you look at Diana's hair and her makeup and her clothing style up to and right after she married Charles, she definitely was not any fashion icon. She was made by the royal family and she understood how to use them to her full advantage. I cannot help but see how similar she and Megan are in some ways. Of course, in many other ways they were incredibly different, but still we've got to admit there are some similarities. But anyway, back to the story of Diana and Charles. Now, when he was married to Diana, I wouldn't exactly call him sullen. He instead was just very, very unhappy. And that is the reason that his friends brought Camilla back into his life. See, he thought that he was marrying this nice, funny girl who he wrote to an old friend he was looking forward to falling in love with. At the time, he was 32 years old and she was only 20. But at the time, that wasn't unusual. I mean, his niece shortly before that had married a man who was 34 years older than she was. Especially back then, it was not uncommon in wealthy or aristocratic families. And they certainly were not marrying for looks. Instead, the thing they cared about the most was the health of any future children in cases where heirs are concerned. Now, Diana also had an affair for five years with Oliver Hoare. When he refused to leave his wife and kids for her, she bombarded his home with hundreds of these weird silent phone calls. And how do we know this? Well, that's because his wife, concerned at the phone ringing day and night, reported it to the police. I mean, I would too. Just imagine if somebody keeps calling your home and you pick up the phone and they hang up immediately. Now, their report said that the calls came from Diana's phone, Kensington Palace, and a call box there. One of Diana's friends said that she would sit outside the whore home in the middle of the night just waiting for the lights to go on when she dialed the number. Her driver even said that she would call from the car phone as well. During their honeymoon, rumors came from Balmoral that Diana had tantrums. She could be heard all over the place shouting out of windows. And later on, we learned that she would pitch these little fits with her family too. Supposedly, she insisted on having her way in everything. Charles actually hired a therapist to try and help her. Well, she refused to speak to the person, but Charles also had therapy for 14 years to help him deal with the trauma of his marriage. He wrote to his friend Nancy Reagan that the marriage was like some Greek tragedy that nobody would believe it if they didn't see it. Diana did manage to get away with all this because she was quite manipulative. She butted up to the media people. She would sell papers for them, let them know where she was going to be so they could go out and photograph her. I mean, when she was chasing Dr. Khan, even the operating theater was involved. Face masks and black eyeliner and that beautiful hairdo on show. Diana didn't do anything privately if she believed that being seen would add to her image. Charles Moore is on video saying that she tried to get him to print that Charles didn't want to be king. Well, he refused to write that, so she decided to go on TV claiming that he shouldn't be king. A man who, at that time, had spent 45 years in apprenticeship and dedication to the UK and the Commonwealth. Now, at the time, the Archbishop of Canterbury said in private that Diana had no intention whatsoever of making that marriage work. She was a schemer and she was quite the actress. The person he said it to ended up publishing it in a book, and that was before Diana passed away. Well, Diana made sure that her private phase was kept private, so people believed her. People wanted to believe her. I think Charles couldn't say what he wanted to say all those years ago. Diana was so emotional in public, it proves that she probably wouldn't have made that good of a queen. Camilla is much more stable, and she doesn't prance around always trying to show off. She's a much better wife and consort for Charles because she lets him be the star. She doesn't care about getting that attention for herself. Now, typically, people have a lot of sympathy for a popular woman that experiences problems within her marriage and her mental health, too. Charles has been blamed for so much for way too long now, and he has just remained quiet. He doesn't tell his side of the story, and we should applaud him for that. I think many people misunderstand Charles, and I think many people don't give him enough credit. He is such a good advocate for saving the planet, for example, and he knows a lot about so many areas. He's quite the student, the lifetime student. William is certainly following in his footsteps, and I think that's a great thing. But unfortunately, of course, we cannot say the same for Harry. He used to be so popular, everybody used to love him, and he has turned into a spoiled adult, a man-baby, encouraged by his absurd wife. Once upon a time, she was accepted by the people of the UK, but she has shown her true self since they got married. There have been way too many lies coming from the both of them. There is one thing that Megan and Diana certainly do not have in common. Megan had been around the block so many times before she married Harry, She's had so many lovers. And if Megan and Harry really have kids, I think the most tragic part of their marriage is that their kids are probably not going to do much better in adulthood. 
but I guess we just have to wait and see what happens. Some final words from me. Charles and Camilla are incredibly strong, and they are committed to both each other and the crown, and they are going to continue to work so hard and to make the royal family stronger. And for me, that predicts a very happy ending indeed. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in, have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.